Captain Siemens. Before we get started, uh, we had a, a, talked about adjusting the meeting till six o'clock. I, and I that, did, yes, that sir. was back at the end. And I'm really the only one that's inconvenienced. We can do it. And we have, no, never mind. We have one, two, three city employees that are here that are on the clock right now. And everybody else is good with 530 because, you know, they're self-employed or retired. Or I'm the only one that's inconvenienced. So one of our decisions uh, this evening is going to be to elect a vice president. So, if I'm caught in a wreck. God forbid. Okay, if I'm <laughs> caught in a wreck on Broadway or Hildebrand or 281 or I-35 on all those roads that I have to travel sure. to get here to, or to get home to take a shower because I've been sweating all day, sure. I'm the only one that's inconvenienced. So, if we have a, a vice president, they can step up if I'm not here and then open the meeting and then I'll come in when I'm able. So to your point, sir, we, th we, we were just talking about the saying before we, uh, Captain Zuniga had said, let me go check the community room. Sylvia was the vice chair, uh, we, some of us recall, um, that we elected last time or, or, or at the yes, beginning of the year, correct. February. So maybe you go three deep to ensure that, uh, you're, whatever you think, sir. I don't know, do you know anything I don't? No, just that okay. she's not here tonight. So if you weren't either, you're scaring our potential vice president candidates. No, 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 candidates. no, not, not at all. Just, uh, just because she's not here, and if you weren't yeah. here, we'd be, at, we'd be in that, that exactly. position. Exactly. So I think that's the better part of valor because it's been skipped for. This is our fourth meeting. We discussed it on the first meeting. It's been 5:30 every other time. So we, we, we copy a template, and that's a, that's all. I understand. Apologize. For I that. Understand. We can go six if it works for everybody. But I think. The better part of valor in this case would be forgo the needs of the one for <laughs> okay. the needs of the many. Okay? okay. Your call, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I think we're all here. I apologize. I did not get to go through everything. It was sent to me, but I got it late. So we're going to go as we go here. So we all got it late, and that's just because the finance officer is, is hit or miss. As you know, we're in between. Yeah. Um, we, we know that we discussed getting it out sooner. We wanted to. Uh, things weren't caught up to, through July 31st until this weekend, and, um, and that's, that's where we're at. So I, uh, we apologize okay. for that. But no, that's fine. That's fine. Um, let's call this meeting to order. We do have a quorum. Thank you, gentlemen, and thank you young lady harboring hobbling in you know with your shoulder but that's the best best story to tell that i was in europe and i got hurt in, in europe right so that's a great story i would like to approve that we're going to approve the minutes of may 8th 2019 i have the minutes here do you all have a copy of the minutes okay, okay. is everybody fine with the minutes if you, okay. All right. A motion was made and seconded. Is there any discussion on that? None? None? Okay. All those in favor? Set. Okay. The minutes were passed unanimously. All right. Good. That gets, that gets rid of two people. Captain Zuniga, are you going to provide us, or Chief, are you going to provide us a status update on the new fleet purchase? Sure. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Absolutely. If you you're if are we ready for that? Um, as many of you know, there was some there was some meeting protocol issues that we had last year, and as a result of that, we were uh, we made that purchase late, late, uh, later than we normally would have. Made it in December, right after it was approved. November, late November, early December, after Council accepted the proposed budget that we took to them. Uh, we placed the order immediately. Captain Zuniga has a contact there at the, on the buy board, and uh, because it was late, so late in the year, 2019s were already accounted for, and we were put in the 2020 queue. They thought they'd be in by June. We're still waiting. 
in a, and not to paint a, a dismal picture, we're going to going to make it work one way or another. But we are exceeding the warranties on those vehicles that we're in now, and we're paying out of pocket for all the maintenance that we're dealing with. It hasn't been exorbitant, but we are we're feeling that pinch now, and that was our that was a scenario we used with why we we trade out when we do. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we're feeling that. And it's not major engine stuff. It's the stuff that's not built to last that long. And, 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 and uh, with, with, um, with stands, you know, the rigors of, of a, police, a police unit. I think some units are at 100 plus, 105, 107, two, two of them. We've only got five out there, as you know. Uh, a couple are in the shop, and one's out of commission from that, that bad accident, that uh, tragic accident we had where two of our officers had jumped. So he's checking daily. Uh, they tell us that they've shipped. S s some of them have shipped. They're assuming all have shipped. They're not sure where they're at, but we're, uh, we're hoping for any day. And a, qu a question on that, is there, what is the time frame for your uh, accessorizing setup once you do get the vehicle? Well, we're fortunate that we have a good relationship, Captain and myself uh, have a pretty good relationship with the recently promoted manager at Industrial where we get our setup, and that's a very good question, by the way. Uh, he's a resident here in our city, and so we, we have a little poll down there. We'll get him in and out as, as literally as fast as, as applicable, or, or practically possible, rather, uh, to include getting us in there kind of simultaneously with the, with the bigger agencies, Bear County and San Antonio. They work us in real well, and we think they can turn one around, what, a couple days, a week? Yeah, within, we can get them deployed pretty quick. Okay. If Thanks. anything does... If any, are, are you, do you have any spare vehicles? Do you use a detective vehicle? Or That's exactly like right. That? That's okay. exactly right. We're, we're very fortunate that um, Crime Control has, and we'll talk about that briefly, has that line item for the admin and CID vehicles, which uh, augment our patrol fleet. And they provide several other benefits in, uh, as well, but that's exactly what we're doing. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Anybody have any questions concerning any of that? Okay, anything? Can we put that to rest? Okay, very good. Second quarter financial re review. Did you get, um, everybody get a copy of the second quarter? This just came out from Captain Zuniga. You don't have a copy? You're more than welcome. No, I don't have one, but that's okay. We'll come right over, over here and share. I did that on purpose. <coughs> I saw that you dropped it, but I put it in my pocket. Okay, sir, are you taking care of that, Chief? I, yeah, I can start it, and I, and I would w greatly welcome your input. I know you have a pretty good command of, of uh, getting reading over these. I know how You've to spend it. You've shown that. You've demonstrated that. I know that. how to spend it. <laughs> so um, I, my opinion is I think it works best if we just start with the proposed 2020 budget and then, and then work backwards and show where we're at and how that, how that fits. Now, I'm open to doing it any way that you all would prefer, but... I think it's in this case, in this instance, it's easier to start at the end and work our way backwards and better understand it than it is to start in the middle of 2019 and work our way forward. But that's it's y'all's call. No, that's fine. Does anybody well, have a preference? It's gonna, if okay. it's going to make sense to everybody, remember. So we'll, let, we'll go over it till it does. We all have an eighth grade education, and that's it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. So if you'll if you'll look at the column, it's all the way to the right. You'll see change. Move one column over to the left, and you'll see 2020 city, man, uh, city manager proposed budget. Um, and you, you know the first the first font. line items at the top. Go ahead. You need to use a different font. I need different font. And I need different glasses, <laughs> Robert. I, I need some of those readers. I'm I put it off as long as I possibly can, man. Go. But I'm feeling it now. Uh, the, you'll see those line items at the top, and. Um, Interest is obvious. Uh, sales and use tax, I mean, that's, that's uh, what we're getting, the actual revenue that we're getting. Um, underneath that, you'll see 275. That's an estimate of what they anticipate 2020 being based on forecasting from the last five years. Um, I, I'm not that optimistic, but I'm, I'm not the one forecasting that. That's from our finance expert. And, uh, but anyway, we've always hovered around the quarter million from that sales tax, that one quarter of 1%. Um, the line item below that is, is an estimated sale of equipment. For instance, when we trade out vehicles, you know, we get, we get a trade-in price. Um, we, ha we have some units that will be, will be going out in 2020, and be because it's so premature, she just put down a figure arbitrarily, what, what we think one unit will, will, will acquire. 
um, it'll likely be substantially higher than that. And, and a good example is if you look to the left of that, in that same row, under the column to the left, projected ending for 2019, you'll see 34,625. Is everybody with me on that? That's the estimated trade-in value of our patrol fleet once we actually trade in the ones that we're trading in. And so I, I would expect it to be a little closer to that for 2020 when we do the uh, CID cars that are augmenting our patrol fleet now. But um, we'll see. And that's, that still uh, depends on trade-in time and, and, and odometer readings and everything else. The row below that, back in the 2020 column, is transfer in from fund balance, and that's basically what's left at the end of the year brought forward. Uh, so when you look below that, the double line, there's a total of 426 um, in crime control before before the regular budgeted line items are, are calculated, right? So now we're down into our regular crime control budgeted line items, beginning with miscellaneous, the 5070 over on your left in that particular row, come across, and you will see that every one of these figures, and I'll explain the anomalies where there's a difference, but all of them are going to be the same. This budget is budget neutral. It's the exact same budget you all uh, uh, approved last year. Uh, it's been the same budget that we've brought forward since I've been here in 2013. It's uh, served us well, and the only difference for last year's budget from the year before that was we shifted some monies, very little, 500 or something out of SWAT line item and put it in a community program uh, line item, if you all recall. Other than that, though, the bottom line was the same dollars amounts uh, being accounted for in the crime control budget. That was for, that was for National Night That's Out? correct, sir, okay. and, and some other community programs that some of the council folks have recommended and you all supported. Yes, sir, but you're absolutely okay. right. <clears throat> so uh, to put your minds at rest, there's no request for anything else right now. Uh, I will mention at the end of this some, some, uh, some ideas that have been brought forward. Uh, the captain and I have explored as well as Mr. Cross has pointed out some, some resources that he thinks would be beneficial to the police department as we have been researching ourselves internally. And I, and I digress, we'll talk about that in a moment. But if you continue down, you will notice that there's no difference in, in what we're um, allotting for the various, uh, the various purchases that we make. And those, to help you digest that, at the very bottom, in the left-hand column at the very bottom, ending committed fund balance and assigned slash unassigned below it, you'll see that we have the, the major purchases out of this particular budget are patrol for cars, which you all approved last year, a traffic vehicle, the CID admin vehicle, um, radios, video equipment, and mobile data computers, the MDCs that are in our vehicles. To uh, recap what you all approved last year, you approved the patrol cars, which are in the, in the process, You've approved the uh, radios, which has already had the trigger pulled in a done deal, and thank you as well. Uh, the video equipment, which is also done and waiting to be installed in the new units, and the mobile data computers. And by doing this, uh, with our rotation and, and uh, typically every three years with the new units, we uh, eliminate um, a lot of the headaches associated with stuff breaking towards the end of their life cycle, and we still gain some value back through that equipment uh, sales uh, a line item where we get monies back for selling these, these things when we, when we move on to, to a newer product. Uh, that said, the only purchases for this year that are to be even considered, and, and they were in the budget all the years past for their, their three-year rotation, excuse me, uh, six-year rotation, are the CID vehicles and that one traffic unit that we use for the step uh, revenue line item on the general fund budget. Get this on, that's, that's the uh, ghost. That's correct. Yes, okay. sir, that is the ghost uh, SUV outside. Uh, and, and, and that one, we're monitoring the mileage on that, of course, the maintenance that comes with that as it goes up. But uh, those will be the only two purchases even slated for this year, or excuse me, for fiscal year 2020. Uh, short of that, the budget is, uh, well, to include that, the budget's the same as it is every year. As you know, uh, we allocate X amount of dollars. For instance, again, I'm at the bottom now, and I'm following these rows across for the assigned and uh, the assigned dollar amounts, dollar uh, fund balances, and unassigned. Uh, to use patrol cars, for example, that, that check hasn't been written, as you know, they're ordered, but it hasn't been written. So you see that at the end of 2020, we're gonna have $236,500 in that line item. That's not gonna be true because we're gonna write that check as soon as those cars come in this year, and that'll, that'll drop down by probably about 176. But point being, if you look back to annual budget under, um, oh, I guess it would be the, the in the, that particular area of this spreadsheet, it's the middle column, and it falls under the 2019 annual budget at the very top, all the way to the bottom. 
you'll see uh, below unassigned, assigned for patrol cars, 48.5. We put 48.5 annually into that line item. Uh, and then every three years, we, we, we look at purchasing the new patrol fleet. Um, below that, you've got the traffic unit. We put, excuse me, th that's annually. Because we haven't bought the traffic unit yet, we have 45,000 in there. We put 15,000 a year. If you look back up at the top, at the traffic vehicle row, 8107, <coughs> line item 8107 on your left, and you follow that all the way across, you'll see that annually, just like we did in 2019, we put away $15,000. And we'll do the same each year going forward. And on that, on that, re, uh, that reoccurring purchase, we, we usually have about $40,000, $45,000 in there to make that purchase and ready that vehicle uh, for deployment. So back down to the bottom, we do the same for the CID vehicles. Um, we do the same for the radios at $20,000 a year. We do the same for video equipment, which that purchase has been made. That is an anomaly there. That should be a, a, a zero balance or a $15,000 balance. Excuse me, a twelve five is what we put in that one. 12.5, if you look back up and find your line item video equipment, 81.20, and follow across to the, to the 2019 annual budget, you'll see that it was 12,500 like it's been every year that we put away for video equipment. Um, so that's, that's all that would be in there at the end of this year because we've already made that purchase. And that is the only anomaly on this spreadsheet that I'm aware of. Uh, the mobile, data, the mobile da data computers, that's accurate. We put away, um, if you look back up to that line item of 81.25, mobile data computers future purchase, you'll see that we put 12,000 away. Uh, we, it says 15,000 at the bottom. That's because we saved some money on our purchase this year. There was 3,000 left after trade-ins of our mobile data computers to the new ones. And that gives us that slightly elevated uh, dollar amount from the 12,000 that we put away annually. Is everybody tracking, tracking that logic so far? I don't want to lose anybody. And, but it's, it's really, it's a static budget, as you all know, and we set those, those major purchases aside. Now, moving on from those, we have the regular budgeted line items. It, just below that, if we're, we're back up at the, uh, the coded uh, line items, below mobile data computers, we start with 8126, and it goes through 9025. Excuse me, 8126 is the, is the purchase line item for the mobile data computers. It's 9011, the equipment fuel and maintenance line item, down through 9025, software and support. All of those line items are exactly the same as last year. You'll see that very little monies has, have been spent this year to date, and that is consistent with crime control because we don't go there till the general fund is about exhausted. And the rest of this year is when we'll use the lion's share of those funds, as, as you know, historically. So it always looks like that about halfway through the year, a little further, and then it goes pretty rapidly after that, and we're grateful that it's there to augment those, those uh, costs. Questions, questions so far or any? I do, I do have a question on the cars. Yes, sir. We got bumped up from 2019 vehicles to 2020 vehicles, and I've been around cars for a lot of years as long as one of our members in the audience, and car manufacturers usually build the cars cheaper but charge you more for them the next year. And it, that's just the way it is. Uh, way it I is. don't know if you're, I, I'm not shopping for one, but I've been around them. Uh, you have this budget for five years to buy, to buy vehicles. Yes. Sir. Five years ago, Cadillac Escalade cost just about $90,000. Right now, it's over $100,000. Yes, sir. So your vehicles every year are going to get more and more and more. Have, are we going to have enough money set aside five years from now, or do we need to bump this up to, from 25 to 26 or 27,000? That's an excellent question, and that's probably something that we need to, to consider, and, 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 and I'll tell you something that will also, I guess, precede that or help in that, okay. in that endeavor. Um, but I, I agree with that. Now, I will say we've been fortunate. Um, we've made, we've made four, uh, six years I've been here, we've made two full fleet purchases since I've been here, and six years is a, is a short sample. I get that. We've been fortunate that we've been able to, uh, to manage the, the increased cost by one brand by switching to another brand and kind of playing that. But that will, that's, that, that'll run its course as all vehicles will be become uh, increasingly uh, more costly over time. Uh, Captain, can you, can you elaborate on that? I mean, what's your gut tell you? I, mean, I agree that you're right on point, uh, Mr. President. I think that we will well, very uh, seriously need to consider that. I will say this, though. We have uh, a reserve. We have reserve funds that we maintain, just like the general fund does, correct? You know, we've, that's by design. We try to keep four to six months, give or take, in there. We've always been a little uh, better than that, a little, little uh, 
uh, ahead of that curve with the crime control budget. And um, if I'm reading this correctly, the unassigned funds down there at the bottom are gonna be about 250,000, and that's a full year of reserve funds. We might should look at a budget amendment later in the year as we forecast these prices of cars, maybe getting with, with, with Mr. Paul or some other experts in the industry and see if we should reallocate some of those funds. Well, when you get the cars, when you take delivery of the cars, you'll have all the paperwork. Yes, sir. Compare apples to apples yes, against the 2019 models and get an idea of what they have gone up. And, and to that point, sir, we're ordering all explorers. And so we've got the four that we ordered three years ago, and we can look at those that, that paperwork as well and see the trend okay. in, in, the, in the projections there. Yeah, good point. Anybody have a question? How many vehicles are we ordering? Uh, we're ordering four. And what did uh, you say? We're, well, okay, George, let me correct that. We're ordering five because the one that got totaled. We were ordering four. We, we, we lost the unit in that crash, that unfortunate crash. Uh, and it was a bad one. It's lost. And so we, we ordered a fifth to replace that. TML, of course, <coughs> is offsetting the cost of that one, the insurance. And um, could I get a list of the mileage we have on those vehicles we're replacing? Oh, we're over 100,000. Yeah, we can get an exact list and email that to you. It's over 100,000 on several because we're writing checks for maintenance now, and we're knocking on it on the other two. The maintenance that your um, the two vehicles are in the shop for, is it something major? Or is it just uh, minor work? Air conditioned. Uh, one was air conditioned, Steve. And that one insurance will aid us with, but the other one that w it was an uh, air conditioned unit at six or nine hundred dollars, which was out of pocket because we're past the war the extended warranty time, which again we we're trying to avoid that, of course. And we're just kind of we're uh, I don't want to say robbing Peter to pay Paul. We're being very cautious with how we're, how those vehicles are being deployed to to minimize those types of costs. Okay, I'd appreciate the, you the list. Um, you mentioned something about the ATV. I didn't hear what you said about the ATV. The all the all terrain vehicle we have. Uh, I, I might have said AEDs or something else. I, oh. No, I haven't brought up the ATV. We're not tonight. replacing that, are we, sir? We're not replacing. Our no, 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 no. Yeah. No, that thing's I a jam. I didn't think it had very many hours on it. No, it's a jam. We're good to go for years to come, and, and okay. thank y'all for that as well. It served us well, and and as many of you know, we've got more and more transients here uh, with larger and larger camps, and we're just about to do the biannual or quarterly run up there in the ATV, and and. You know, make sure that we don't have any sex offenders or anything else going on nefariously out there. And uh, the mayor and, and the city manager went and, and, and uh, observed it the other day. And it's on San Antonio stuff, but, you know, because their proximity to us and because of the crimes that we get as a result of it, we feel compelled to go out there and at least uh, ID some folks uh, more thoroughly and see how they're living and what's, what's going on at the camp. Rather large camp, 8 to 10, but we'll use that ATV for that as we do in, in many other events. No, sir. <coughs> Anybody? Everybody else good? Good. Okay. Um, okay, we have, we've had the discussion and uh, anybody have a motion to approve the 2020 proposed budget? I make a motion. All right, second. we have a motion and a second. Patsy Martin with the second. The only thing I'd like to mention is that we do have some new members and they're not here to um, vote, and I thought it'd be nice if they were involved in the process. Not until the next meeting. Yeah, their this term budget's will begin. not due until September. what October? Uh, it well, it, that's a that's a difficult question to answer necessarily because we're delayed at council now as well. The city manager's not here, but I know that we have a running clock. There is a clock that that runs in crime control um, that we have to have ours submitted in a hearing. We've got to, after an approval, we've got to hold a public hearing and then get this to council in the time to, to catch it with one of their uh, uh, approval dates that's been assigned. So, um, you know, we were delayed last time and that cost us cost us some issues. I, I, I strongly urge you not to do that, but I, I get the, the concern for doing so. Yes, sir. Well, I would think that the, the board members would get on with the ATV and come in two years from now. We would be more educated to vote on the budget rather than somebody that's just coming on. Well, I don't think uh, I don't think Mr. Booth is talking about um, them voting. They're not going to be able to vote, but to see, to, I think, to, to see the process, and that's that's. Uh, I agree with George, and um, if we knew the if we knew the outcome of 
what's going to happen on council that would that would be a good crystal ball for us um, I think that we're, we're still going to be the same voting members if we predominantly if, if uh, well no it's it's not till October so we really do need to yeah. get it done, George, because we're going to have new members that will be here. Uh, we can't uh, if we vote on it then. It, and, and another concern is members. a special election could change things on council as well, yeah. and, and we don't want to delay ours to, to be the issue. We don't want to be the impetus for any other delays at the council level. And, and I, I agree with you, Tom. I think you all have the most intimate knowledge. There are no changes. It's the same budget for six years. I, I mean, I don't want to find us as a city or as an agency in the same position we're in right now with these with these units out back because we, we delayed. Even if we have a few days, and we do, I know that we do because I did the math earlier, but we don't have many, uh, and we haven't called our next meeting yet. So we've got to, that, that's also something that needs to be considered in public hearing as well. And we have a motion and a second, so we need to move on this. All those in favor? Thank you all. And um, back to those those other resources that uh, that Mr. Cross and, and, and I were talking about earlier and the captain and I have been researching for a while. There's been some interest lately for law enforcement to consider and, and have begun using the, um, sir, Mr. Cross, if you'll help me out. The unmanned, uh, what the heck are those things called? Oh. Let me address it just for a second. Please, please. Everybody that's here. <coughs> As everybody knows, I've got about, I have 32 years of experience out there on the street in San Antonio. And uh, one of the things, keeping up with the news, I've noticed the predominant trend and the term that they use is suicide by cop. And so the first question I had for the chief is, because of a news item that showed up Universal City in Converse, they were showing their non-lethal weapons. And so my first question to the chief is, does, do all of our patrol vehicles have a shotgun inside? Do all of our, do all of our patrol vehicles have a shotgun? Not the uh, beanbag shotgun, no sir, but they all have a shotgun, a lethal shotgun. Well. All it takes to make a beanbag shotgun is buying the beanbags and putting the ammunition available in the trunk. Beanbag shotgun shells are very inexpensive. And so being out there on the street, I've had it happen before personally myself twice to where a man <coughs> was trying to commit suicide by police officer and I was able to talk him down. And this was back in the day before they even had a negotiator in San Antonio. So I guess I kind of plowed that furrow for him a little bit. But uh, to have those beanbag shotgun shells in the trunk available to be loaded into the shotguns so that they do not have to eliminate or kill that person would be a viable suggestion to consider and the chief said that he was going to look into that to see. The second question is talking about non-lethal weapons, how many tasers do we have deployed? Everybody has one sir, 23 captain. Very good. And they're used, I will tell you this, we, uh, Steve you can speak to this better, how many, uh, roughly how many tasings do you think we have a year? This is going to surprise y'all. But, but based on what you buy for the for the duty cartridges, 20 plus? Yeah, 20, 20 plus tasings annually. It's it's a substantial amount of folks folks riding the lightning out there in our city. Right. And I'm not laughing at the unfortunate uh, situation of them doing that. Just I say ride the lightning because I've been on it. And it's it's uh, it's riding the lightning. And I'll lay it out for the board to consider because the chief said that he's already going to look into it a little bit for presentation at a later date is uh, the police chief over there in Converse was talking about the deployment of new technology called drones. And they, in Converse, they've got three of them. And he 
listed out what it cost them, and they only cost $300 a piece. And so having a drone available, especially into areas where vehicles, it's not good even for the ATV to go, or in my case, having to go to burglary scenes where guys are up there burglarizing a business on a flat roof, knocking a hole in the roof, having a drone available to be able to see exactly what's happening there. And the chief made a suggestion that we could even put a FLIR unit into that drone to be able to spot the heat signature of a person who was trying to escape from police custody. So I just lay that out for the board as consideration and the chief will be probably making some kind of presentation at a later date. That is but the expenses that were, are involved, I'll say this, are not that exorbitant on any of those. No. They're very, very affordable technology now. Sean, you're, I know you're well aware with, uh, yeah. with your IT background. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of agencies have gone to them. The captain, I was un unable to attend, but he has met with a, uh, a resident here that has a business is a dealer in, in the drones and, and uh, so we're, we're pursuing that. We appreciate, as always, y'all pointing that type of uh, stuff out for us in case we're missing something. The drones that would be capable of carrying something like the FLIR, I'm confident that you would need training and certificate That's to right. be able to fly that. That's right. Um, so there comes a question of do we have a particular officer or officers that go through that training? That's right. And for something that size, where is it driven from? You know, do you have it in one patrol vehicle or do you have it here? And, you know, Capitol isn't that big, That's but right. is the signal going to be strong enough to reach from here to wherever we're flying it? That's right. A lot of things um, to consider. A lot of Absolutely. things to consider, yeah. If I can interrupt you gentlemen here, we're, <coughs> we're, we missed a, a topic that we need to deal with. And I made some notes on what you were talking about, and I've got some questions as well, but I would like to get back to item number four, which was the expiring terms and appointments and reappointments. You know, that's something that we need to get taken care of. But I do have some questions on the bean bag and, and the same thing as uh, Mr. Baker did on the uh, drones. You bet. So you, do you want me to tell you who's been appointed, uh, Mr. President, in well, terms? Well, we have... Uh, my term is still there, and, and Mr. Baker's term is still there, and everyone else sitting at the table here has, is going to expire on the 31st. That's correct. Now, I do ask a question, a point of order of the city secretary. Uh, I did not get a chance to, did not think about it until I got home and I printed out the things and I did not have an opportunity to look through the book. Um, any, um, do reappointments have to be um, blessed by city council? They did that last night. Yes, John. They did it last yes, night. Yes, okay. John. Yes, sir. All right. Has any city council member, I have not received, the mayor hasn't contacted me, the city manager hasn't contacted me, the city secretary hasn't contacted me, or you haven't con contacted me, letting me know if there were any people that were appointed? for that's, any, anyone that's leaving. That's exactly what we were gonna talk about tonight. Okay. Yes, sir, right, that's good. what I have on, my, on the list. It was done last night, sir. And uh, are those people here? Yes, sir. So Mr. Booth okay. has been reappointed to another term. And I will, I will send out an email with a new, uh, spre a new spreadsheet of the, the, the members going forward. Okay. But Mr. Booth has been reappointed as well as Mr. Cross. Good, um, I like both those guys. We'll take them. And that'll be till 2021? That's what I have, yes, sir, 831 of 2021. Okay. Um, currently, and I don't know that this will stay there, Ms. Gonzalez assumes that position back for now uh, because the only reason she, she left it was the council assumed yeah. the position. But I don't know where that, that will go. But that one's, for now, that's, that's satisfied. Uh, two, new, two new appointees, Elizabeth <coughs> Gonzalez, uh, Mrs. Gonzalez's daughter and I think John Mars. Uh, does that sound correct, Melissa? I think it was John Mars, uh, Douglas's appointment. And I would like to take a moment and say thank you all very much for, for serving. It, it's an important duty and I know it, it can be an inconvenience at times, uh, but it is, it, we always appreciate your guidance and, and the friendships that we develop. Uh, and. Uh,
uh, Mr. Hurst. Sadly, you were not, you were not as well. And, and but yet we, I've I've truly uh, enjoyed this these last couple of years with you. And, and Mr. Martin, obviously, you know. And I look forward to seeing you. Thank you all very much. Which does bring, which does bring up another question uh, concerning that. Uh, the two members that are not here, um, point of order, may we, at the next meeting, elect yes, a vice president to yes, give those those two yes, an opportunity. I think that's the re the, that's prudent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Agree with that? And I wanted to let you know that Liz did call and said she wasn't able to make it, but okay. she wouldn't be here now. Okay, good. Thank you. So will there be a meeting of the body the next day or two? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, actually, if, if Sylvia retains her seat, she will not be on CCP. I mean, they, they picked a date last night, but that could, that's subject to change, too. I, I'm, we're in uncharted waters. I, can't, I don't Nothing know. Nothing will surprise me. Yeah. That's right. So we have to assume it is, assume that if she's up here, she's not here today because she can't hold an office, if I'm correct on that. I, I would okay. assume as well. Yes, sir. All right. All right, so basically we're going to all agree to disagree, and, and I myself would like to express my, my thanks to you and my thanks to you, and uh, I think uh, you and I have been around for a while, and so uh, even though you're not uh, out there, I know you have helped given me support, and Tom, I thank you for your support. And George, I'm glad you're back. Thank you. I'm glad you're back because you're my nomination for vice president. <laughs> but we'll get that we'll get to that the next meeting. I'll back you up on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give you a chance to get out of it. Okay. Now on comments from board members, um, I'm going to lead this off right here because I like the beanbag am ammunition thing. So my question is. The police department, like any other government entity, is phenomenal about doing studies. Studies? Studies. Sure, sure. <laughs> you no know. stranger to them. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily you, but well, I got the, you. The nationally. Yes, they, sir. They love doing studies. Perf and everybody else. Yes, so sir. So I wondered, you know, I wondered, uh, you know, based on Glenn's comment, has there been a study made of the reaction, uh, pros and cons of having the first round in the shotgun, a so, beanbag. So let me let me revisit that because that that is, um, and I don't, Mr. Cross is a is a true blessing with the knowledge he brings, but but that uh, that method, that particular method of using the same shotgun, you know, I was a SWAT team lead. That is a that's a no go here. It's a no go at every agency. You want to set. You want an independent shotgun for obvious reasons. You don't want to be rotating rounds out. You not. You don't want to guess. Did somebody else leave the beanbag in? Did I? Which round am I on? Is it lethal? Is it not lethal? You clearly have an identified shotgun that is a less lethal, and and the cost still seems ne negligible, Mr. Cross. To your right. point, you're looking at the cost of another shotgun, three, four hundred dollars. You know, we're talking not much for for uh, the, when it's necessitated, when it's needed. But as but that's as the way to in, do it. As in the Dallas situation did i grab the right that's shotgun? exactly right and in those moments and, and folks i don't tell you this with ego or bravado i have been in those moments most of you know my background i've been in two use of deadly force situations you don't want to be wondering if you've got the right round in your shotgun at that moment uh there was a time when that was the the regular you know that was protocol swap them out and go and but that has that has that has changed and, and rightfully so because you get an accidental shooting that 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 700 shotgun that 500 shotgun just cost you a couple million dollars in, in, uh, in a check, and, and someone lost a loved one. 
you know, so, but that, that it's a cheap solution still. I'm, I'm still on board 100%. I just think we look at purchasing the shotgun and the ammo <coughs> and making sure that they are distinctly different now. And isn't that the right, Captain, the way, so um, that's, that's, the, that's how, we, how it gets done in, in 2019 and, and really for the last couple yeah. of years. But good point, yeah, you don't, you don't wanna be there. Yeah, and that's and it, even if it looked a little different, you know, more like a grenade launcher or something. Like they got that, an yeah. orange. What when I was certified on them, it had an orange pump handle, yeah. very clearly distinct from from the uh, other uh, lethal shotguns. Yeah, uh, you know, just like you, you would you would expect it to be. Now on the drones, thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. Does anybody else have a question on that? that did that well, spur any others? Study ballpark. I'm curious about the less lethal shotgun versus taser. So if everyone's carrying a taser, do you still want to have the less lethal shot? And, and that's something that I would want to, you know, I, I don't know if many of you know this, but I'm the sitting secretary for the Alamo Area Police Chiefs Association, and I meet with uh, other chiefs once monthly. And uh, as that sitting secretary, I, 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 you know, I hold a position, one of six uh, of the 30 chiefs mm -hmm. in the area. And we have vast uh, amounts of knowledge available to us for in areas that, that, that the captain and I may not have an expertise. And, that, and that's, although I was a SWAT operator, it was, it was some years ago, and I would want to ask that exact question. Do, is there one, uh, certainly the taser is a, is a very preferred, less lethal uh, tool. And we've used it to, to uh, great lengths, but I don't mean that in a bad way. We, 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 we train with it out here, many of you have seen us. Uh, it's a fantastic tool. I remember when we got them in Universal City when they were fairly new. I was the catalyst for that when a guy pulled a knife on a traffic stop and I pulled my pistol and we walked like that through shirts uh, at school let out time at 2.30 in the afternoon. And the only option was to shoot him and, and, and anyway, shirts got on scene, tased him. I walked up, took the knife away. A, a, a resident was videoing. We took that video back to the chief and he ordered them the same day and that tool has been effective for law enforcement across the country. It's an excellent question. The, the, what you want to concern yourself with, as many of you can imagine, is distance with the less lethal shotgun. Do you gain anything more by it? And I think there is a trade-off. I think we do, and it's something we'd want to look into and we will look into before we bring it back to you all. But excellent questions and excellent points. Um, on the drones, I agree. I think drones would be beneficial because you a lot of times if you have... Um, there's more of an opportunity for you to have a standoff situation, but with a drone, you can get behind the property and see what's behind the property. You can see if there's anybody else out there if before you would send, you know, a team to go around the back of the house, you'd be able to check that out. We, ser we serve a lot of our own high risk warrants and that would certainly help in developing the ops plan and there's a thousand other uses, but you're absolutely right, Mr. President. I was thinking, starting out to see if it's beneficial because I, you know, like what Sean was saying, you know, training is involved, so on and so forth. Uh, anytime you would have a standoff situation, I'm assuming a sergeant has already been called and is in, route, in route. I came out to the last one. I was uh, the commander on scene okay. for the last well, one within about 15 minutes. The and captain, the chief, the sergeant. We're all coming. Somebody's gonna yes, be, sir. Somebody's gonna be there. Yeah. Yes, sir. The, the uh, patrol officer, the you know, is going to have some assistance, you know, command, command the situation until yes, authority sir. gets there. That's My accurate. point being mm -hmm. is uh, maybe having the sergeants trained in the drones yes, sir. and have they have the drone in their vehicle. So when they get there, they can assess the situation. Other backup is going to be there. I'm That's assuming. Right. And then then you could go ahead and do and that would be your limited capability. And of course, while they're in the office, they could be flying around sending notes to each other. You you're know? you're <laughs> <laughs> they could be practicing. Right up to that point, yeah, you had it. Yes, you're absolutely right. That, there would be protocol and, and procedures for that type yeah. of stuff, and we would look at those types of scenarios are, uh, through and through. Yes, sir, but you're right on point. Because training, in, in, you know, I've done a lot of training uh, as far as teaching and, and programs and things of that nature. Training is always good. Education is always good. If the sergeants are going through something, by the training that they would get to learn how to use the drone in a police situation, it'll just re-enhance the training that they've already got. Absolutely. And so it'll, it'll be, you know, ongoing. And I think that, uh, you know, there's, there, I can't think of any times that uh, 
that I can recall that you would absolutely need it. I know, I think maybe one or two times that you could have used it. But another thing that you could do if you're out in the daytime and you're checking uh, out on the out in the potrero out here, you could use that drone to fly over and yes, and, and get a look see coming back at where you're looking. So you know, we, we discussed that and so many more. You know, we've had, believe it or not, we uh, people try to run from us on occasion and they'll hit those drain ditches if they're on foot and it happens quite a bit. We we got into one just the other night that we, I was out on at HB. And they go through those tunnels, and, and another, you know, you could deploy that faster than you can get a unit back around in heavy traffic and get, you know, north or south of wherever the tunnel goes. And some of them go a lot further than you think they do. They don't just go under the road. They, they V off and come out in different areas. But you could get that drone up high enough that you could see activity as somebody leaves the other side. And it's a force multiplier. There's a number of, you're, you're right on point, there's a number of uses. Uh, the, the, the biggest hurdles would be training and, and, and liability, insurance, TML, you know, some of these other nuances. But Mr. Cross? One of the other things that the chief made mention of that I had forgotten, let's say, I didn't overlook it, I just forgot, is that he's also going to have to do research with the aviation department at the airport. That's correct. Our proximity. Because we don't want to cross into flight paths. We, uh, I believe we have, in the city, we have a 400, 400 foot. Yeah, yes, we sir. We have a 400 foot height. Uh, and there when you get up 400 foot, and I've seen it from a drone. It's up there. It's, you're way up there. Yeah. You're way up there. But we want to check because there are some changes, and that stuff can sometimes change, and you're not made aware of it without yeah. doing the legwork. So we would follow up on that, get a policy from San Antonio and some of the other model agencies, and, and uh, look at all that. You bet. But in, I think that 100 foot would probably be the ceiling that they'd be even looking Four telephone at. poles. That would get you a pretty good view of a backyard, or, uh, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good view. Yeah. Very good. Anything else? Um, I was curious about the uh, tasers we have. Are those the ones that shoot out the wires and, and, yes, and stick to a person? Yes, sir. Is there a life cycle to those where they're only good for like five years and you have to replace the cartridges? Or Captain can speak work? better to that. He's a taser instructor. But to your point, there is. And we just recently purchased them. We made it. You all approved. Uh, some of you did. Approved a couple years ago, wasn't it, uh, Chief? We, we, Chief uh, Davis and I came forward and requested purchase of new ones because the older ones were being um, discontinued. Tasers are about five years uh, shelf life. Um, of course, the more that they're used and deployed, the more they tend to wear down. Uh, eventually, they they get to the point to where they need to be sent back for for repairs. If they're submerged in water, they need to go back in for repairs. There's nothing that we can do here locally, um, but they 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 do get nicely wear down. Don't they? Yeah. And for the cost, are they like six hundred dollars now, seven hundred dollars? No, they're a lot higher than that. No, they're they're like twelve, thirteen hundred dollars each. Doesn't include the uh, digital power magazines or the batteries, and of course the taser cartridges. Uh, they run about twenty, twenty-two dollars a cartridge uh, for the length that we would like to get them for twenty-one foot. And of course we have to order the practice cartridges, for, which are uh, fifteen foot. And are there more than one cartridge on a gun, or do you have to keep reloading it? Or each each ta taser is capable of carrying two cartridges: one that's in the discharge. Uh, carriage and one on the digital power magazine so once the officer deploys the first one if it's a no contact or the wire breaks they can quickly uh, engage the second cartridge okay does it do that automatically or does he have to manually you have to yeah, manually okay. change it out okay back okay. to a blending of the shotgun and the tasers I go back to my education What they taught me in the police academy down there at San Antonio, and they even had a video on it, I'll never forget, that if a dude has a knife and he's within 15 feet of you, he'll get you before you can get your gun out. So 21, having 21 feet, a beanbag shotgun is a backup that has a longer range than that 15 or 21 foot wire guided Taser. I just toss that out just so that y'all understand, because he will get you. Oh yeah. Now, if I'm if I'm memory serves me, the there are probes inside the cartridge that if the wires do come loose and you're you have, you know, an, an individual semi under restraint, 
you can just put the end of the cartridge on them and, and pull the trigger, correct? That's right, a drive stun. You can pull the cartridge off, flip the switch, pull the trigger, and you got another five seconds of, of, of uh, immediate, of, of direct contact. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. But if indeed has a knife, I ain't going to get that close to him. You oh, be that yeah, close. No, I'm saying it's semi-restraint. You've That's always right. got, you know, if, if you're wrestling no, with him and the wires come off, there is there is still backup another, on that. another yeah. backup. They've got to do that. But I knew, I, I listened to the safety features because I think I was on the board when that's right. we had to get I, them all. That's right. And I think we spent about 17000 on that purchase. But that, that sounds about accurate that we requested. Oh, yeah. No. Ride the lightning? <laughs> sure, you bet. Yeah. I was just going to call on uh, Mr. Mayor for uh, citizen. I was going to insert citizens to be heard. Mr. Mayor, I think you're here. The offer stands. Would you like to ride the lightning? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you have any comments, Mr. Mayor? Thank you. If y'all aren't aware, not to interject, but uh, Philadelphia, as I was telling the chief, is going through something really traumatic at this time. If you didn't see the news, watch the news. They had four officers shot up there. They had gone in to do an interdiction on a, a drug bust, the way it looked like, and it wound up that six of their officers wound up injured, two of them in an automobile accident trying to get to the scene and four of them wound up getting shot. Non-lethal wounds, but they did wind up getting shot. Mm. Three California officers yesterday, one lost his life, and I don't know if the other two have succumbed, but one was serious. Traffic stop gone bad, somebody with a rifle. Yeah, That's horrible, so it's tragic. I did have another question. Uh, I was curious about the vests, the, the bulletproof vests that y'all have. Um, I know there's a life cycle on those as well. But good for five years or ten years or and are you constantly rotating those out yes sir we do we have a uh, we have a schedule that we keep for starting with from a higher date and that, that comes out of general fund uh, currently out of equipment purchase or, or clothing allowance yeah. uh, we offer we provide X amount and oftentimes the officer will use our clothing allowance to improve that vest or, or upgrade it to a, a higher level um, and, and many officers go out and purchase their own their own uh, uh, higher level type of, not military vest, but exterior carrier is what I'm looking to say. A captain and I both carry one in our trucks. I normally wear my vest, guys. August has been brutal. And gearing up for stuff like this in yesterday's council meeting, I'm, I'm sitting at the desk upstairs, which is arguably more dangerous than anywhere else in, in our city. But uh, I say that, of course, <laughs> facetiously. Um, but I, I, I didn't put it on today. It's just as much as, but we do, and, and good point, thank you. And, and it's encouraged to be worn, absolutely. We don't, we don't mandate it, and, we, and I'm, 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 I don't know why I haven't yet. It's probably coming. Um, it saves lives. We know that. Uh, Mr. Cross, do you know it? They've, I don't, they're on 10,000 lives saved or something now. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, and in this time and age, everybody's got a target on them. So. Is, there a lighter, is there a lighter vest, you know, and, and this is going to sound uh, like an oxymoron, but for a patrol officer, because it's usually frontal. That's right. It's usually frontal and maybe some rear, but not so much on sides. the sides or anything of that nature. I just wondered if there was more of a, a summertime they, outfit. They, and to your point, there kind of is, and they've come a long way. And, I, and I'm not sure. I think just I think almost 100% of our guys are wearing it. They're the exterior carriers. You almost can't tell. I wear one. It's on, it's in my office now. I wear it almost daily. Usually it is daily. Uh, it, it looks like your uniform shirt, and it's a much lighter vest. They've come a long way from those old, big, cumbersome, man, real heavy suckers that we used to wear underneath our shirts. And so you can get out of that when you're in the office writing up a report, and they are lighter anyway when you, when you just can't, can't, don't have time to get out of them. But, yeah, to your, to your point, there, there's a summer vest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For the officers that you're saying go out and, and upgrade, what are they upgrading to? The levels, you know, they, they'll go to a 3A from a 3. Uh, you know, they'll go to a 308 rifle round that'll, oh. that'll stop from, we usually purchase the pistol, up to the, hi the highest pistol round. So and that's a, like AR-500 uh, or something different? Yes, there's, they got those too, and, and those get, they get real costly now. They've come down quite a bit, but that's exactly what they'll upgrade to, something along those lines, Sean. And, and we all, uh, myself, the captain, most of us have those as well. And they're the exterior carries. They're either ceramic or, or the steel plates that you're not going to, you don't want to wear that one around all day. You just don't want to, you compress your spine. 
Okay. Um, but they, everybody carries them. That you see them loading them in and out of their cars every morning, and, and they're ready to deploy them. But uh, yes, sir. Thank you for asking. Well, speaking of personal protection, just one more thing, because I know I haven't eaten yet, and, <laughs> and I know everybody <laughs> needs to go. Um, are the automatic are are the automotive manufacturers doing anything with the body panels on cars on the doors to where a, a door actually could you know if anything mr president they're like soft butter now you're plowing yeah. through one side and out the other now you could order a vehicle i'm cer certain with deep enough pockets or the you know the bear cat type stuff but no, sir, they're not. I didn't know if there was any Kevlar or anything that could be put, you know, inside that panel. the panel. Because Kevlar is a wonderful material. Wonderful material. And and it doesn't add a lot of weight. You know, you'd have to be a little bit thick, but that would maybe stop a 38 or. Sure. You know, at least it, because if a 44 or even a 50, well, maybe not a 50, but a 44 would go and hit that Kevlar, go through the body and hit your hit your body armor you, it may deflect it it's probably deflecting it with that much s slowdown yeah there's a good chance and that's a that's a great idea we can we can look around into stuff like that but your your average fleet unit right off the deal punch through it like like butter yeah so uh, but you know we love to plan for the contingencies you know we say it's not if it's when and luck is when opportunity meets preparation those are those are mantras we live by they'll be on our patrol room wall as you know many of you know we just finished <coughs> remodeling in there thanks to the mayor and city manager and the council approval of some uh, monies last year and uh those will be going up and we say them often and we don't just say them we live them you know we're training all the time and we're always looking for ways of doing it better and, and, and safer good 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 yes sir um if there's not any anything else, uh, does anybody have a motion to adjourn? Be before, can I say one thing? Yes. We, we, we've got an item on there we skipped, and it's no big deal, but next meeting date. And I, I, oh. propose, I propose that we just wait and see. Uh, we've got to get with um, the city secretary and figure out when we have to host a public hearing. So I'm not prepared to give you that exact date because it needs to coincide with some council time stuff. And so we'll just send out emails to all, all, all current members and oncoming members uh, for those that we have contacts for and we'll make sure we get them all. I had the, the meeting dates in here somewhere. We had February um, 8th or 2nd or something. We had for last for this year we had February 13th. May 8th. May 8th and August the 14th and of course it needs to be on the co corresponding day yes, of the week. Yes sir. But why don't we use those as a has that worked out okay for everybody? use those as a guideline yeah for next year but, but, but my point is we're gonna have to have some short notice crime control dates coming up for the public hearings and um, yeah uh, on the budget I think we have to have it within I'll have to double check and get with you guys I don't want to get to lying to you but within like a, a hundred days before the fiscal year starts the hundred before January 1st so sometime before like September 10th or somewhere we need to have another one where we host a public hearing and I will reach out to y'all tomorrow Friday at the latest when I have that information okay. on what dates I I say we got to beat. We got to do it before this date, and y'all can tell me what works for y'all on a Wednesday. We'll shoot for that. Um, and we've got to get the uh, and then the new members, the new members sworn in and bonded yeah. also. Yeah. So yeah, there's some. We yeah, got some let's not, let's not wait to the last minute. No on sir, that. no sir. That hasn't worked well. No sir. Thank you all. Okay, thank you. And thank you, a, everyone. I don't think we made the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye aye aye.